my beautiful Zenpop box. There's a big ugly sticker on it. If you don't already know, Zenpop offers several different subscription boxes. This is specifically their stationery subscription. So it's full of stationery supplies directly from Japan. We're going to open it up, find out what's inside, and then try and create something with it. So I hope you'll come along and uh, we'll see what happens. Kind of spooky summer night, eh? I think these are clouds, but they look like the Enterprise. We have a QR code linking a menu describing all of the stationery we have inside. But first, let's just take a look and see what we've got. This is cute. What is this? Push button stamp. Oh, it looks like a little keyboard. I'm gonna get it out of here. I don't read a lick of Japanese, <laughs> but usually there's some kind of graphic which is helpful. So this is what the stamp looks like. So that's like the case. Then you can put this anywhere you want it and it should create these stamps. Hey, okay, we'll do it on some like actual paper. Boom. So if you place this, you're gonna have to be careful where you put it, depending on which design you want. But you kind of just place it there. And if you push this button, oops, I think I did it twice. We'll try that again. Tap it. Ah, why is that fun? Boop, 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 boop. Oh, I gotta push a little harder. It takes a little practice, I think. That felt like a good amount of pressure. I love sleep. Hey! So you've got a binder clip, a pencil, one of these guys, tape dispenser, washi tape, and then a clipboard. How cute! Those are all things I use, but I've never thought that drawing them or using a stamp of them. So we will see how handy that is. Next up, ooh, it's a little bind. It's a little folder full of sticky notes, I think. It's sort of magical train themed, which September 1st. You were supposed to get on the Hogwarts Express. <laughs> I missed it again. Yeah, it's a fly. Ooh, it's a it's a flying train through the stars. So we've got all the passengers pointing out the different stars. There's also one where it's the trains going over some trees, and then you have two mini markers. This one looks like a dove or something in the stars. I'm not sure. Oh, it's like swans in the sky. Interesting. And then this one's really cool. It's shaped like an open book, like a story or something. Cute. This says it's study management card <clears throat> with weekly challenges. Probably get to write your own, I imagine. Oh yeah, look at that. So you can put down different things you'd like to track and then see what days of the week you do them. It calls it a weekly challenge. Half of them are purple and the other half are blue. Oh, they're purple with blue writing. And then these ones are blue with purple writing. Not sure what these little dots are for, but it looks like a face. Cute. What the, this looks like an ice cube tray. I'm guessing it's not. Oh, I think it's a pencil case, actually. Ooh, it's so squishy. Ooh. Ooh, silicone and you can put all your stuff in it. It's a little weird. It doesn't fit very many markers in it. <gasps> oh, but it's pretty good. It's actually holding them in. I don't know why the benefit is of having a silicone case without a zipper. One of the things Zenpop guarantees will be in every month of their subscription box is washi tape. I don't see a normal sized washi tape in here, but I see this skinny guy. Oh, I kind of like the packaging on this. It says it's for scheduling and it shows it on a calendar on a specific date. Do they have different ones? So maybe this is like urgent because it's orange. Hmm, that's my uh, inclination. We're going to look it up though. Need this. Hopefully they tell me. It says you'll get one of two models. Oh, one says important things and one says day off. Yeah, so this says important things, I believe. How cute. I really like that packaging, the way it like fits in. It sticks out of the sides. Next up, there's a pen. The Friction Ball Slim. Oh, this is one where that uses heat to erase it. Hey, let me show you. Oh, it's so slim. They weren't lying. It's so skinny. I'll draw something so you can actually see it erase. So it has like a, I don't know if it's silicone, but some kind of like plastic rear end. <laughs> and then you can erase with it. You can also use that hair dryer, I've heard. Someone says in the cold it comes back, but I have not been able to actually replicate that. But I've seen it on like the internet, so maybe it's true. And it's a beautiful purple color. I don't think I mentioned that. Ooh, some pink things. The Mark Plus two-way color marker. This side, it looks like it's a pink highlighter. Oh, bring this back. Actually, that's not very highlighter-y. That's more a water-based marker. And then the other side, it looks like it might write in a light pink. Oh, it's like a mauve color or gray. Could be gray. I don't know. And this one is not erasable. 
If you wanted me to test it, just saying. Interesting, interesting. I'm liking some of the color scheme, like turquoises, pinks, and purples. This is also, ooh, what the slidey. Ooh, hmm, slidey. <laughs> There's some instructions. Oh, that's a plastic case, I see. So first you gotta remove this, take off the plastic, but otherwise I pretty darn sure. Betting money, that this is an eraser. Ooh, I love the texture of this eraser. Some erasers are just too smooth. Ooh, it's like the biggest, chunkiest mechanical. Oh wait, what is that? That lock it? Ooh, you can put it out here and then you can lock it and then it won't squish in. I see. Wait, but if this doesn't squish in either, what's the difference? What does that do? It says what it does, but I don't know what it's saying. You can't move it up after that, so it must be locking. All right, we can confirm that's a lock. I love this color so much. I've just been falling in love with pink lately. I need to do my nails pink again. I want this color though, it's so pretty. And it looks like there are two more things in here. We have some seal stickers, boots, like matcha. I can't pronounce these. At least they're written in the alphabet that I understand. <laughs> oh, I've had these before. They're very, very good. Bye -bye. And finally, it looks like a ruler. The two-tone color, 30 centimeter folding ruler. I like how it's in like a foggy plastic. Give it to me, get out, release it. Ooh, it's foggy too. And this is that turquoise color I was talking about. I guess this was the only other thing that was turquoise and that was packaging. But you know, I take inspiration from everything and I'm feeling the turquoise vibe. How do you unlock this? It's actually got like a little uh, notches or something that keeps it there. Oh yeah, you can see the mechanics. Isn't that exciting? It's clear. You can see how it like jumps from notch to notch. All right, so I'm seeing pinks. Then we have purple, this turquoise, and these blues. This is pink, but I kind of want to go more of like that pink. I feel like this is gonna kind of throw us off, like kind of fluorescent compared to everything else. We also have this, which is like kind of spooky nighttime. That's where we're gonna take some of this inspiration from. I'd also love to include a character because that's just what I do. So a lot of this is back to school theme. What was the theme of the box? It's called Skylight Treasures. I don't really get it. Oh, that's right. Remember this? It was like the flying train. I love that. Trains are not the most fun thing to draw. I like more organic swooshy shapes. But let's look at one for a second. Just make it swooshy if you want to draw swooshy things. I don't know. <laughs> That's where the coal goes. And this can be like a, a bell. Uh-huh. We got a train. They need wheels. I think they have a big wheel back here and some smaller ones here. And then they're all kind of attached at some point. And then need a little roof. And then it's gonna be like swishing through the clouds. And the stars. <gasps> oh wait, if this is steam. Change this to steam. It's not a bell anymore, it's for steam. We can have it have stars coming out. So there'd be no train track, which is nice because that doesn't sound very fun to draw. It seems very mathematical. Ugh. We can have like trees down here. Eh? I think I'm drawing it more as like an animal. I don't know if that actually makes any sense, but I'm thinking of it more as an animal to kind of keep it swooshier. <laughs> so then this is um, one that the people will be in. I guess those should be kind of square windows, maybe. So we need another one back here, and then there'd be one back here too. So we got a little train. If we had more like swooshy shapes, I feel like it'll look more swooshy and stars and all that jazz. Oh, I forgot this can erase. So we can actually erase things. Look at that. I think I want this wheel to be bigger. I like the spokes. Look pretty close. Oh, they put another big one in the front of their train. So I'm going to do the same thing. Cause I'm jealous. There's my <laughs> train as an animal. My animal train. Or maybe it's not so much as an animal, but it's more like how I draw. And I usually draw organic things. So I'm thinking of it that way. And it's kind of working pretty well. No complaints there. Just add some more little details here and there. Some more stars. Cause it's a train in the stars. What an interesting concept. I love it. Oh, pinch this. <laughs> Give me this binder clip. Boop. Hey, thank you. Very handy. Put a big number on it or a little number, like three. Adding little details because I'm not sure what else to do from here. Could add color. Can use these. Will this make it look like a red engine or will it look pink? Ooh, I forgot how water based these are. Ew! Gotta be careful, you can't really lay over the same spot, especially when it's wet or it will start ripping up the paper. And that's no bueno. 
I'm not sure what to do with this idea. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of like the idea of like stars coming from the smokestack. I still want like a character of some kind. I have like that conductor character from like 25th sketchbook or something. Might have been 27th. I literally don't remember. But she was a conductor. I think she had braids. I think she had like poofy sleeves and uh, her overalls. They were stripey. That was the best part. Oh yeah, buddy. And she had these big gloves, which were so fun to draw. Maybe give her some eyes. Bangs of some kind. I really don't remember. I'd have to look it up if I was really trying to draw her. I don't even know if she had a hat. Oh, she had a bandana. I remember clearly now. Now it's back to thinking. I feel better when I'm drawing, but I don't know what to draw. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bandana here. Is that what it was? Wonder if you can erase when there's that stuff on top. Oh, you can erase it through that? Some pencils you can't erase underneath the marker. Impressing me. All right. So we've got a conductor. Although, if she's got a magical train, right? Shouldn't she be a bit more magical? So <laughs> I guess we're drawing witches. I'm gonna grab a pencil this time though, so I have a little bit more control. Probably my cool erase. Mm -mm. So it needs to be a witch. We could change this to a witch hat. <gasps> what if it's a witch hat with that brim? Was that weird? So if we put like a baseball hat brim on a witch hat, the brim on a witch, that looks silly. That, uh, I don't know about this. Give it a couple more minutes. See if I like it better with an outfit. I'm thinking more witchy, like Edwardian elements. Maybe like a high collar. Could do like long witchy hair. Although that seems like it's gonna get in the way. Doing a pretty good job on a cool erase pencil, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> cool erase pencils don't really like erasing even though they have a race in the name. But they're more erasable than colored pencils. Yeah, the brim is losing me. I feel like you need this, you know what I'm saying? This is just the witch vibe. Uh, thinking short hair. Maybe a body would be nice. I think most witches have those. I sure might want to restart. Urgh, get out of my way. I'm gonna need that paper. I draw a little bit more chibi. I feel like that just helps me design cute witchy characters better. Kind of squishier features. I love the idea of the gloves. I feel like she's gonna need them. If she's, I don't know, shoveling magic coal. <laughs> As for the witchy vibes, maybe boots. Yes, yes, yes. High heeled with laces. The witch hat's just gonna get in the way in there though. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna have to say witch without the hat somehow. What's another like witchy feature? I did like this little collar. That was kind of cute. Keep the poofy sleeves. We could just make it more of a dress. We could make it a stripey overall dress. Maybe it sticks out a lot. I wanna keep the stripes. I feel like it needs the hat. I just don't know if the hat is going to fit inside of her engine. She needs her shovel and her big glove. Oh, I could have put her like foot up on this pile of magic sparkly bits. I'm thinking one big braid. Not that you'd see it very well. All right, it's definitely witchier than that one. I'm gonna create an oval for our witchy girl. Then she can be hanging out in her train somehow. All right, all right, I gotta think a second. Okay, so I've got no idea, but I'm just gonna start drawing, I guess. <laughs> I want her, could it be like inside of the engine? That's like the floor. This is the corner. And then you have the furnace somewhere here. But it need to be opened if she's shoveling things into it. Maybe it has like a door on it. I'm gonna need some kind of reference. This is like the round part, right? And there probably be lots of like levers and things. And here we have our magic fire. And I need some kind of window. Lots of texture I feel like it's gonna help here. And then obviously we need the character, which I forgot. <laughs> Would she have like a little stool to sit on maybe? It needs to be way more magic stuff in here. <laughs> a cat. Although swans look like what belongs in here. Can I put like a swan laying down? There you go. Little magic swan. Could put like a shelf up here with like potions. 
Little shadow. Maybe so. Ooh. This makes no sense, okay, but it's magic, right? Vines. Mm. Nothing could live in the heat here, I'm sure. But <laughs> these are magic vines. And how do we know they're magic vines? They got these little swirlies. More over here. It's all supposed to be in an oval or something. Something like this. It looks a little witchy. And these are like wood planks. The little knots in them. What else is a witchy thing? What if it's got like a little plate here of metal that's like bolted down? Is that cute? I mean, not cute. I mean, practical. It's got little bolts just to catch any fire from burning the whole thing. Put some kind of rug, a witchier rug. I'm not sure what a witchy rug looks like. Is a rug of some kind? I don't know. Just throw more clutter in there and it looks more lived in. Maybe some more vines. Put something here for extra texture. More texture on these. Put the magic stars outside the window. I just looked at this and it's a book. I feel like witches have lots of like spell books. We could put some of those up here. Instead of three potions, we'll put some books. Some big thick ones. Maybe just a couple of books stacked here. I made perspective really janky, so this is kind of tricky, but there's a book. Could have something like taped here. Some kind of illustrations on them. Okay, more vines. More vines! Yay! Should probably figure out how to put the character in here. I am not gonna add color to this because I will destroy it. I don't have the expertise there. I know, like, do it because you'll never get the expertise by doing it. But also, I really like it, so I don't want to do that. But we're gonna try and figure out how to put the character in here in a cute way. Like, I could put her on her stool. It's gonna be right here. Maybe put her arm on here. We're just figuring something out. Let's try something. Gotta make her body kind of small. I think I'm making it too big. Maybe move the head upwards. Trying to have a good composition while also fitting the character in here. That's why you don't draw the background without drawing the character first. Big chibi eyes, why not? Gotta put in the hat. She's fitting in all nicely. The composition, she's a little high. I would have probably moved her down underneath the swan a little bit more, but we're working with what we got. Okay, we're gonna move this. Our magic conductress. <laughs> that makes it sound more witchy. Conductress. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> and the big gloves. And she's a stripes. I'm losing a lot of. I can't really see in here. She needs her little boots. Maybe there's like a little bit of ruffles. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah, it's a little confusing. But this is stool. And then there was stool here, but that turned into her foot. So we're gonna put another stool piece here. Just so you can see it. Hey, okay, something's wrong here. This butt piece, maybe. Cute! Should maybe make the sky dark since it's nighttime. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover all that in. Give us some contrast, too, that I think is missing. I need to add stars in there somehow. I don't quite have the detail with this eraser, so I'm gonna try a Posca pen. And add some stars. Oop, this was too big of Posca. I'm doing it anyway, though. Put some stars in here too. Magic fire. And the swan doesn't really stand out anymore. So maybe we will color in this rug a little. This should be kind of shiny looking like that. Mm -hmm. Does that make the swan stand out a bit better? I think it does. How cute. I love how full it ended up being. Like from starting with not sure what the heck I was doing, it ended up like looking very lived in, which I'm really appreciating that quality of it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we could put like a skull. Is it a human skull? Is it a fake skull? You may never know. I might pull this in Photoshop and add some color. If I did do that, it will just play on screen for your enjoyment. <coughs> Hello. As you can see, I've got that image I sketched in my sketchbook, but now it is in my computer. Lower the opacity a smidge. Actually, first thing you really need to do, because sometimes when you look at it, you don't really see the problems, right? But what you gotta do, kind of flip the canvas. You can never really mentally prepare yourself for this like that. And oh, I think from here, Usually what I would do is like start doing like some of this stuff, warp it before you actually start sketching over it again. But I think before I do that, I actually draw the oval in the right size like this. From there, add like a stroke to it. Probably in like just the color black for now. We'll sketch on top of the face, kind of figure out the shape of it. Not changing the style or anything. Just kind of making sure everything lines up properly. Okay, I do have like a little pointy eye. Look how many temps I get in digital art. Isn't it amazing? Draw it as many temps as I want and it doesn't ruin anything. As long as you're using layers, guys. Use layers. 
See how I'm like, it's almost getting more sh like fluid or see how stiff the body is. The old face was kind of stiff too. It's just like the way art gets better, the more sketches you can add sometimes. <laughs> this is all brim of the hat. The only thing I'm not crazy about is the mouth. Lower it down, then she might look less happy. So we'll see. Oh, we can also just do a little oop. But then she's kind of sad. Might just kind of shrink the head a little. A little more appropriately sized. Mm -hmm. Just checking out the torso here. I also wanted this skirt to just be a little bit more floosh, flouncy, flouncy, flouncy. I'm not sure. We got the gloves. These are supposed to be the fingers. That's a big old glove. <laughs> I also don't know if they even look like hands. Also, I'm definitely seeing this foot doesn't make as much sense as I thought it did. All new legs, why not? Nope, those aren't them. Adding this like kind of triangle gap here and this like swooshy leg kind of adds a little bit of softness to it too. Whereas if it was perfectly straight or these two legs were all connected like this, like a rectangle, it definitely wouldn't have. Exactly what I want. Needs all the laces. Not sure where to put the third leg of the stool. Cute. All right, let's see if we made some progress. Oh, definitely. See how much more like weighted and squashed? Like it looks like she's sitting somewhere, whereas this she's kind of like, I don't know, drawn on top of it, should I say? There's just more weight to the second one. Ease, 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 ease. I mean, even the hands don't look as bad now that there's things to distract you from them. <laughs> I also, I remember when I was sketching it, I kind of wanted her somewhere. Oops. Do we want to move her? Better composition, then we can move the swan over a little too. We'll zoom in on in there. Lower. Then they have a little bit of a booty. When it's laying down, it's looking a little like Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Hmm, how did I miss this line? Two lines. <laughs> I don't know why I picked that one. Clearly more accurate. Looks broken to me. <laughs> Move her. Ah, come on. Move her like more over here. That way. And grab her. Move her a little bit more this way. Then they're kind of overlapping a little. They look a bit more like a, a lived in environment, I think. This is looking better. This is looking better. Sometimes you can change so much it stops looking good and you didn't know because you're looking at each little tiny thing and it was slowly getting better. And then you look, take a step back and you're like, it's way worse. So I'm putting everything on a separate layer if it's anything that I might potentially move. I like how stylized the skull is. I think it's kind of cute. Make it wink. Did I create like actual a perspective grid? It would make a big difference. I'm gonna open a new file, size of what I've copied, and we'll shrink it way down. That way I might be able to fit the perspective grid in here. So it looks like, <laughs> I forgot how to do this. So you see the top of this, which means, and the bottom of this, which means the horizon line is probably here-ish. I mean, it not, may not be completely accurate because I didn't actually do a perspective grid, but I'm gonna guess the horizon line's about here. This is why you do it before you draw the sketch. Thinking, just because I'm seeing this stuff, it looks like it's over here-ish, maybe here. Let's see if that's accurate. Okay, it needs to be farther over because I can kind of see how this is not gonna look right. Let's try a way over here. Mmm, okay. Does that work for this as well? <gasps> oh, it's close. And then anything above this brown line, we'll see the bottom of. Anything below it, we should see the top of, all right? I can actually probably even grab this and like see if it looks better anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Hey, oh, we definitely do need another. What I could do is copy this and reverse it. See if I can make these line up. Obviously the horizon line has to stay in the same place. Oh, I think it's like way further away, no? I'm trying to make it line up with the furnace there. Like obviously the sketch is a little janky. And now I can already see that the furnace is like falling to the right there. Okay. Okay, I think we've got something going here. Let's see if this ends up being helpful. Throw it in here. Fit again. Because our horizon line, we said I think it was about the eyes actually. Is that right? And then set it to multiply so maybe we can see it a little better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, now we should be able to draw these books. Ah! I just moved it. Let's lock that. Let's try and draw the books. Now that we have some kind of grid here. Hmm. This is actually way different. 
Hopefully this makes sense at the end. It'll at least be closer. We got. You gotta admit. Oh, another book. What gets janky is when you have books that aren't the same grid because they're actually on a separate grid. <laughs> I don't know how to do that yet, so we're just gonna fake it till we make it. A little shadow under there. Ah, beautiful. Now they fit there. Since that's kind of like its own thing, I don't want it to be on the same layer as the background. I feel like we need to tackle this furnace because it's confusing. What I think I'll do is actually turn it into a box and then we'll round it off like this. Kind of straight here, straight here, go in there. I don't actually know what I'm doing. Let's look up, oh, they are circles. I wasn't wrong, but they actually open a little differently. I wonder if I could do that better. It feels weirdly more magical. I kind of like it, even though it's real. Like, that's the door. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? This one actually has the square part in there! And I already erased it. No don't mind me just decorating a furnace. Mm hmm I like that it looked like a little face, so I might keep that up. Gotta add something magical, you know? Yeah. There's a little fire in there. I don't know what that is. Hey, let's see what it looks like without it. Oh yeah, the perspective's much better. They're a little bigger because they're closer to us, right? That's why I did them on separate layers. All right, all we really have to do now is add a little rug and then do this background area and the ceiling. I realize how off the ceiling is <laughs> with the perspective. I didn't even look up there. I was too busy down here, which might mean it's not going to work at all. But we'll see. I mean, I guess the end of the wall. This will be like the corner ceiling. All right, you're not gonna see half as much ceiling as you did originally. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Funny how perspective grid makes more sense than your brain does. Just gonna use this because it's helpful. The line that's literally already there. Now this is a horizon line for things above it. You'll see underneath. And things below it, you'll see the top of. And if I did everything right, it should make sense. <laughs> <laughs> This uh, shelf, I can't tell what wall it's on. I think it's on this back wall here, but you can clearly see that makes zero sense. So I might have to move it. On. Wow, that was tripping my brain, seeing that shelf and trying to draw a different one. Holy cow. So things on this wall line up with the yellow line horizontally. And things on this wall would line up with the green things horizontally. Floor. I feel like this dark green line is perfect for that. Oh, except it's a tangent. <laughs> There's the floor. All right, I think what's next is just filling it in with vines and stuff, make it a little more witchy. Maybe they're like nailed to the ceiling. Could that be cute? Hmm. I feel like that adds like so much, just like little detail that I really like. Look good. Hey, wow, okay. See, it makes a big difference when you decide to actually put in the effort and dare I say be intentional. <laughs> like it's still sketchy and stuff, but it makes more sense. You know what would be a big test to see if I did a good job is rotating it. Cross your fingers, please. Everyone, I'm gonna need everyone. Okay, that's not that bad. See what a little perspective grid will do? I think the only thing that's slightly off is maybe her face. Wow, okay, yeah, use perspective grids, folks. Know what it needs is a broom. <laughs> I say that like it might be easy. You're not gonna know it's a broom, but I can put it back there. There you go, little broom. Magic <laughs> everywhere. My biggest pet peeve is when someone draws the moon, like a crescent moon in the night sky and then adds like a star here. And I'm like, um, do you know what shape the moon is? I just, I think it's because I used to do it. So it drives me nuts. I do need to just clean up some lines maybe. Just add some white backgrounds to each of the sketches. Then it'll be the only pot you see. Just a little layer. Now she's on the other side of fire, so she should have some kind of shadow in this way. But it'd also like be flickering. It's fire flickers, so whatever that would mean. Oh, I'm going a little crazier than I thought I was going to. I'm not sure. Just kind of making it up. <laughs> That's obvious. That's gonna do it. 
I think it's the first time I actually was able to create a perspective grid afterwards and somehow make it work. So yeah, proud of that. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. But I do want to thank Zenpop for sending this box my way and you guys for watching this video all the way to the end. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.